I need more people to know about this. I want to talk to you about all the chapters that you've gone through. Who the f is punky me? This is so cruel. Wait. Oh, sh why you decided to create Evolve. Who is that? Like, I don't recognize myself. You can get there quick. I had such a profound experience and my whole life changed. Like, you never know. I always say, like, I started a wellness company and I was never so unwell. Blow up overnight. Who are you guys? Go, 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 go. Like, 20 reps. Do it till your arm falls off. Everything comes with certain sacrifices and certain costs. And you're going to age. And then your body's going to give out. What yeah. are your hot moments? Obsessed. With it. See, the gym bros are right. I mm -hmm. heard the rumor. That's really the secret sauce. Wow, that's pretty rad. We're live. We're talking about Jennifer Aniston. Mm -hmm. And you got an email out of nowhere from her. Yeah. Tell me about that. I it was really late at night. It was like August 2022. And I get an email from somebody from her team that's like, hey, she's a big fan. Do you guys offer like in-home personal training sessions? She's been streaming at home. Can we set something up? And I'm like, who the f is punky me? This is so cruel. Like who would do this? This isn't real. And then we have someone call and they're like, no, I think this is real. I think it really is her. And so we sent a trainer there and it turned out to really be Jennifer Aniston. She had all of our equipment at her in-home gym was streaming at home, fell in love with the method and was like, how do more people like how, I need more people to know about this. This method's incredible. I want to come on. I want to be a part of this. Like, how do we make this happen? Wait. So here's my question. Yeah. I have a couple. How it did, still doesn't feel real. Like, as I'm amazing. saying that, I'm like, is this actually real it, life? She's very, to me, as seeing P-Volve evolve, she reminds me of a P-Volve girl. Mm -hmm. But how did she even discover it? Her friend was doing P-Volve, found P-Volve during COVID. They see each other. Oh, my God, you look amazing. What are you doing? P-Volve, what's that? ordered all the equipment, started doing it at home and fell in love with it. That's what's so cool about online business. Like you never know. You never know. You never know. So when you figure out that she's a fan in your business mind, what are your steps? Like, do you immediately want her as an investor? Like, were you like, I need her to be an ambassador? Or was it just like, let's get her a trainer? I think none of that even crossed I, my mind. It was so like an out of body experience. I still didn't believe it. And I like... Danny, our trainer, called me after. I'm like, it's not really her. And she's like, no, it's her. And I'm like, no, no th there's no way. Like, it's so, you know, she's like the end all be all. Then we get an email from her team that's like, we need to meet. Can you come to LA? She wants to get involved. Like, who are you guys? Like, who are you? What's Pival? Like, we're so tiny. Are you leaving your sanctuary of where you live? Of course. Next Should day, go. go. Let's, you know? Okay. And so yeah. what's the meeting like? He just said, like, this doesn't happen. We don't call brands. Brands call us. But she's, like, absolutely in love with this. It has changed her life and her body and the way she thinks about fitness. And what can we do? Wow. That's pretty rad. And how many days a week was she doing it? You know, I'm going to ask every She day. works out around three to four times a week. Okay. And, you know, a combination of in-person and then streaming at home. But I think what's really amazing is her story of why she fell in love with this method is very similar to my story of why I started this company. And, you know, my body was broken down from high intensity workouts. She has a lot of sensitivities and she's broken her body down doing high intensity workouts. But we still want to feel strong. We still want to do a workout that you feel, oh my God, my arm's like shaking. My ass is going to fall off. I can feel all those muscles, but I don't feel depleted. I feel energized. I feel alive and, you know, taller and, and longer and sculpted, but I feel better. I look amazing, but I feel 10 times better. And, you know, she's even said, I wish I knew about this in my 20s. And I don't want to see people break down their bodies to try to get these crazy results. And you actually can kind of have that perfect combination of both. Well, I fell in love with p for exactly that reason. I am very sensitive to bright lights. And my daughter says it's because we have blue eyes. Whenever Michael turns the lights I've on, heard she that. goes, we mm -hmm. have blue eyes, dad. So yeah. it's, well, it's true. <laughs> but people with blue eyes have stronger light sensitivity. Yeah, so I'm sensitive yeah. to light. So I don't need like strobe lights in my face when I'm working out. And I'm also sensitive to sounds mm -hmm. and um, I don't want to be yelled at. No. When I'm, I have a very not uh, chaotic life already with my work that yeah. I don't want to be yelled at at what to do. 
And I also don't want, you know, gangster rap like blasting through the speakers or techno music like I'm in a club. Lauren yeah. works out to like Spanish guitar. Yeah. And I want Spanish. Will you send me the playlist? Yeah. Yeah. Send me the playlist. Okay. Spanish guitar classic on Spotify. I'll text you the playlist. Love it. Initially, actually liked P Volve myself because I felt like it was an exercise that paid attention to the nervous system. Mm-hmm. Do you find that? I think the nervous system is going to become really hot for 2025. I think that's like the word. I think what's so amazing about this method is that you really can scale it down or you can scale it all the way up. Like it stands for personal evolution. And what you need is different to what I need, different to what Michael needs. And yes, because of, you know, it's low impact, it's functional fitness. There is this element that you're not spiking your cortisol. It isn't this go, 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 like 20 reps, do it till your arm falls off. But it's this balance of, you know, what do you need for your body that day? And I think, you know, over these past six and a half years, like personally, I've gone through so much of getting off birth control, my hormones being crazy, getting diagnosed with Lyme disease and actually not being able to get out of bed or move my body, freezing my eggs. Like as a woman, you go through so many different chapters of your life and movement can be medicine, should be medicine and can be a part of that. Each one of those chapters and it should be able to evolve with you kind of what you need, depending on what you're going through, if that makes sense. And I think for so long, exercise fitness was designed for a man. Sorry, Michael. And the woman was supposed to follow that. But really what we like, we design it for women. You know, it's for women by women with that lens. We go through so many different things and really, you know, your, your fitness should be able to adapt with you kind of while you're going through those things. And it shouldn't be, I think this concept of longevity and that your fitness should do so much more for you than just make you look good. Like if we're working out, yes, I want toned arms and defined abs and that, but I, me putting in that time, there should be so many other benefits than just looking good. I want to talk to you about all the chapters that you've gone through. And the I last think, time we talked to you was 2019. People should go back and listen to it. <laughs> 2019, <laughs> it was January. a long time and ago. A you, lot's ha- you had your hair care line, which you sold. But yeah. I want to go back to your first chapter, which is why you decided to create p Take us there. And then I want to talk about the birth control and the Lyme's disease and all these things that you've gone through. So take us back to why you created it in the first place. Yeah. I mean, I was in my early twenties living in New York city. And I just remember like waking up one day, looking in the mirror and I'm like, who is that? Like, I don't recognize myself. I don't like the body I'm in. And I started on my fitness journey and I was going to all the different boutique studios, doing all the high intensity workouts and just found myself physically not seeing what I wanted. And more importantly, like in so much pain, I go to the doctor, I found out I have scoliosis and I was like, well, I don't like how I look. So I don't really give a shit about my pain. I'm going to push through that and just, you know, try to achieve these results like so many people do and did more damage than good and walked into a studio and they were training in this functional fitness world. And I'm like, what's that? I've never heard of that before. But very quickly, I physically started to see what I wanted to see. But more importantly, my back pain went away. I felt open. I felt energized. I felt like I had my confidence back, but, and I actually liked working out. I looked forward to going to those classes. And I felt like no matter who I talked to, how old you were, like my age, my mom's friends, like it, it was always, I can't work out because I'm injured. I stopped going to that gym because I got injured or I don't see results. And I'm over here, like my body looks amazing, but I feel 10 times better and started doing my own research. I want functional fitnesses. And if you really think about it, most workouts train you for training, but with functional fitness, it trains you for everyday life. Like, but when you wake up in the morning, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, you're bending, you're reaching, you're rotating, your body's moving in 3D, you're moving in all planes of motion. And the way you exercise should really be mimicking that so that you're enhancing your everyday life. I had such a profound experience and my whole life changed, you know, with this type of movement that that kind of passion and hunger and drive to create something really big and to spread this and to help so many people just took over me. And so we really set out, we got a small gym and got other trainers and 
just really like down and dirty, just kind of launch this and see if other people were interested and wanted to reach a bigger audience than just in New York. And you guys were getting like Victoria's Secret models like early on. I, I went to one of your first gyms. I feel like your your office was that upstairs. dirty gym. Yes. Remember, <laughs> he brought me up before the session and I like I first met you. Yeah. And then we went down and worked out. It was like very early on, I think. Or Yes. Like like 2017, I Doesn't think. Doesn't that feel like like I remember when you did that because I was with you and you're like, oh, I'm going to this thing. It feels like it was just yesterday. But, not to age all of us. No, like, I know, yeah. right? It feels so long ago, but it feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, even when we, when we, you know, I had a, I, I'm surprised we haven't talked in five years. I was like, oh, she's probably been on the show in like the last like two years or so. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit. It does feel yeah. like two years. Yeah. So you know what? I want to say something real quick though. So I know this is mostly speaking to women, but to give the bros a little bit of credit, <laughs> I think, and I've said it on this show. It is not, I think we The bros? Yeah, the bros, the gym, <laughs> the gym bros. Because that's what they, you know, I think, you know, the gym bros get a lot of shit, but I think many of them have also been tuned on to stuff for a long time. Like, you know, like I see a lot more women now talking about creatine and mm -hmm. building muscle and doing functional fitness. And yes, the bros can be out there, but, and I call them the bros, the gym bros. But I was saying on a podcast one time, like we've accepted as normal to be in your 20s and 30s, even 40s with back pain. Yep. And that's not normal, right? It's just like people like, oh, I, like, I'm getting older, I have back pain. Like, you shouldn't have that. 100%. It's, it's mostly because of a lack of, you know, foundational and functional fitness and muscle building. And, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people, if they do what you're talking about or work out like you're, you've built here, like they, a lot of that back pain and some of the stuff that they're having structurally will just go away. It's well, not normal to be in that kind of pain. A hundred percent. And I think it's really like two things are going to happen to you in your lifetime. Either one, something out of your control. You're going to get injured, an accident, some type of autoimmune condition, something where your body just gives out that's out of your control, or you're not going to take care of yourself and you're going to age and then your body's going to give out. And it's like, that shouldn't, ha you know, that shouldn't happen. Like if you shouldn't be doing these detrimental things when you're younger, when your body can take it, that are going to lead to such, you know, things that are going to make you age, you know, not gracefully. And or if you are going through something that is out of your control, you might think there isn't a solution. I can't move my body. I can't feel strong. I can't. But like that is my mission to make sure that there is a solution for you if you are going through something or that you aren't doing this long term damage when you're young so that you can live younger, longer. Like it's 2024. I think it really is all about longevity. I mean, if we think about all the other things that we do and all of our aspects of life to make ourselves live younger, longer and to feel good and to feel better. And I think finally, maybe we were a little ahead of our time, but when it comes to fitness, it can and it should do so much more than just make you physically look good True. to make you like make you function better at the end of the What's day. What's so interesting to me about you, too, and I don't think that you have talked about this enough, is that you are really business minded. Like, I think that there was like a, a big part of of you moving this business forward has been you steering the ship. How did you know how to do that? Is that an eight? Is it natural? I am a very big visionary, yeah. big thinker. Definitely. I also just think what I personally go through helps steers the ship. I mean, I come from a very entrepreneurial family, watching my dad and my brother and different things. So I think that like when you light a fire under me, it's kind of hard to put it out. But I like once I get going, watch out. Um, so I, I guess it's always kind of been there. But it wasn't really until I think this it, it took over me because I'm just so passionate about it. Well, you're very good at it. Birth control. You decided to get off birth control. Why? Yeah. Uh, why? I mean, I think early 20s, you know, I got married. I wanted to get off it. I just didn't like the way that I felt on it. And I think coming off of it, just hormones and everything my body was experiencing, I never had that prior. I think so many other women, it's not talked about enough. Like finally, we are talking about hormones and what all these kind of outside factors that we're taking at a young age can do to you as you get older. But coming off of it, I mean, it's like I could eat certain things that have a different reaction once I was off it. Doing certain workouts had a different reaction when I came off it. So I think really trying to find, you know, that good rhythm of working out, not spiking my cortisol, how I could try to rebalance everything and make sure my stress 
was to a minimum. When you have a company, I feel like you're already at high stress. So what other things that you can do to kind of bring that down and not keep everything so high? Having a perspective with birth control at the age I am now and having a daughter. Yeah. It is fucking wild. I I remember the first time that I got on birth control. I was 16 years old, maybe even 15. We drove to Planned Parenthood, me and my girlfriends, and we all four got on it at the same time. And the pr- the problem is, is like, yes, it does protect you. It, you have safe sex, but it's crazy to me that the woman predominantly has to put it in her hands. Like the guy doesn't want to wear a condom, right? We've all heard that. Yeah. And the old, you throw, like, you, you guys don't, never, none of you guys want to wear a fucking condom. Like, let's just call a spade a spade. You guys are all smiling in here. Like you don't want to wear a condom. Yeah. So the brunt of the shit becomes on us. So we take this pill at a young age and we have no idea the repercussions no. that it has on your hormones and your moods and your weight gain. Mm-hmm. You gain 20 pounds. Skin, all Skin. of it. It's wild. Even it gives you hyperpigmentation. Like there was no talk about this. And it, it it gives me a little bit of anxiety to know that, you know, my daughter's four years old and that in 10 or 11 years that she could be like walking into a Planned Parenthood and just getting it without really understanding the big picture. When I got off of it, I remember telling the the woman that waxes my brows, shout out to Lindsay at Browtique. I said, I'm going to go on spirulina lactin mm-hmm. right when I get off because I was manipulated, I remember, into thinking that birth control actually helped you not have acne. Because there's I remember a, there, thinking that too. Remember, yeah. there's like a thing in it called <laughs> spirulina lactin. So I thought when I got off of it, I was all nervous that I was going to get pimples and stuff. And I got off of it and I'm like, I'm just going to let my body adjust. I didn't get pimples. That didn't happen. But if I had just gotten on spirulina lactin because I had been manipulated into thinking that it would have probably been not a great road. Yeah. When you decided to get off, why is this something that you are passionate about talking about? Because it's something that you brought up. Did, did something well, I, happen out I, of it? I think it. it's also like Back then, I feel like we didn't or our parents, right, like didn't have enough information. Like nobody talked about any of this stuff that what I did in my teenage years or my early 20s, what that kind of long term effect is going to have on my health. Um, So I feel like our generation, I mean, I'm going to be 32 and there's so many girls my age and a little bit younger that are all coming off of it that all have all these like insane skin issues. And I feel not a doctor, but I feel it's because of all the stuff that we did to our bodies when we were a teenager in our younger 20s. So I think it's this notion of like, it's 2024. There are so many other solutions and there's so many other healthier ways to live um, to still achieve those goals, but maybe by not causing so much damage to your body in those early years. So I think call it birth control, call it um, the way you move your body. It, to me, it all kind of feeds into the same thing of that. I know you're terrified for your daughter, but I almost feel like, and I would, I don't have kids, but I would be too, but I feel like we're so much more educated. We had to go through this you know, to get like, to the other yeah, side. Like, is, we're so much more educated than our parents I can't wait to hear your was. opinion because we can't wait to hear your opinion. Well, go ahead. It, wearing let's hear. a condom is like doing push-ups with a bag over your head. So that's my <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's your contribution. No, 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 Thank you. So I'm not going to comment so oh, you just di- did comment. <laughs> directly on, Hold on, put it on, TikTok. <laughs> on women and using birth control. What I will comment on as a greater society is we are really good as a society at looking at something and seeing the short-term benefits mm-hmm. and disregarding any notion that there could be long-term detrimental effects. Yeah, You can look at vaccines, you can look at um, hormone therapy, you can look at what's going on with Ozempic, you can look at what's going on with birth control. We are really good at discounting all of the potential stuff that could harm us as yeah. a culture, the way we eat, everything, and really good at, at doing confirmation bias and saying, well, like in this moment, I need these very specific things. And I think the big takeaway from there is that people have to start thinking as long-term thinkers. Like there is no such thing as a free lunch in any area of life. Like you can't in business and a relationship, anything like everything comes with certain sacrifices and certain costs. And people have to get better at weighing the pros versus the, versus the cons, right? Like if you want to do something like a birth control or you want to take, you know, some kind of, you know, pill or vaccine, or you want to, um, whatever it's going to be, you have, you can't just think about, oh, this is going to, in the short term, this is the good thing. You have to also think like, what are the potential risks down the line? And that's in everything, like business, everything. everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're just not good as a culture at doing that. You mentioned Lyme disease. 
first I want to know how you knew you had it. But then I also want to know if you remember when you got it after you found out you had it. Yeah. I'm very lucky in that regard. There's a lot of people who get bit, don't know, 10 years later. They, you know, have all these symptoms. Uh, this was 2021. That's a big risk over there in the Hamptons and like places like Nantucket with the tall grass, huh? Mm-hmm. 2000, yeah. 2000, no, 2020. Um, I was out in the Hamptons and my cat got outside, got away from me. I went chasing for him, whatever. A couple of days later, he's itching, itching, itching. And then I'm like, oh my God, I had a scab on me. What was that? And then I found like three ticks on me. <sighs> and literally like within probably three months, like I went down like overnight. So what sick. do you mean for because it's so I feel like the problem with Lyme disease is it's hard. It seems like it's hard to pinpoint what is I went down. With. So literally woke up and was drenched, like dripping sweat, whole body, just insane muscle fatigue, like hurt to walk. Um, Couldn't think, couldn't remember anything like brain fog, just nauseous, just every like almost like flu symptom, but like times 10. Overnight. And this is carried by these ticks. And when you yeah. say you found them on you, what do you just like see them like? Bit, like I mean, it's, they're so tiny. Yeah. You know, I didn't, it like looked like a scab, but do on you it, pick them off or burn I, them. No, I picked it off. Cause you don't know what it is. I, I was by myself in a house. I got ass naked. And I'm like, oh my God. What are you God, supposed, to, do? supposed to How are you supposed I don't, to burn them off? I You're supposed to burn them off. Because what? I didn't know anything this is what that you they know. Heard, what they get, they get their claws in you yeah. or like their things. It's and sick. if you pick them off, I the, thought that was leeches. No, if you pick them off the things, or people are going to correct me on the internet. The things stay in. So maybe is my, my question while you're telling the story is, is maybe one of the reasons you can get Lyme disease because the, the things stay in you? I think not all ticks carry it. Okay. And, you know, I think looking back at the whole, now this is what, four years later, like looking back at the whole situation, if I look at where I was at that time when I got bit, it was the height of COVID. I was getting divorced from my co-founder. Um, my business was exploding. I was trying to run a business, you know, being remote. Uh, things were changing day to day. I mean, the stress around me was at probably an all-time high of what I've ever experienced and trying to show up every day and be positive and smile and, you know, get the team going. And I think... I also am somebody who can put on a brave face and never deal with the shit because I just like to do what's easy and just keep my head down and focus on the work and everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine when clearly it wasn't. And I think my body was at such a compromised state emotionally that when I got bit, I just I, I didn't have anything to fight it off. I also think too, like if if you are like a Louise Hay fan, like things like that seem to like happen when you're when you're like you'll stub your toe when you're really stressed, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily that you like stepped into something; it's that you're so stressed and frenetic and like yeah. chaotic that like you end up stubbing your toe. Like with something like this, it's like you were there's so much stress that that it makes sense that that happened when it happened. Hundred percent. And I just didn't have anything to fight it off. And I think it's also like looking back, I'm almost happy in a way because I think I needed to make a lot of changes in my life and I needed like your body gives you signals. I'm hungry. I'm tired, you know, but if you don't listen to it, it's going to do something to make you listen to it. And for me, that's kind of what that was. And I think, you know, I got diagnosed. I spent the next probably eight months like healing, but at like a very surface level. And what do you I, do to, to manage it? You can do, there's so many different ways. I mean, is there medication? There's medication. They'll put there. you sometimes on antibiotics, which I did. That destroyed my stomach. I went off that. Sure. Then I did more like alternative functional and different IVs and different therapies and high dose NAD and ozone therapy and high dose vitamin C. And Did you do the NAD intravenous? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, like, you know, like intense. So, and that a lot of that really helped me. But for me, and everybody's journey is very different, but I found until I actually started dealing with more of the emotional shit, 
I didn't start to feel better. I don't think if you don't work with your significant other, people maybe don't understand how complex it is to be married and to be working with someone and building a business. What's the secret? <laughs> this, people always ask and I always say, yeah. I'll let you know when we figure it out. Mm -hmm. We just got in a fight in the car. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. the truth. <laughs> the secret is to working and being in a marriage, I think you really have to be crystal clear and have the same vision. Mm -hmm. Because if if someone's in Timbuktu and you're over here, like it's it's when someone wants to, and I'm making this up, but like relax on the beach and that and be on a computer and the other person wants to be in a high rise, it's mis mismatched. And I think, I do think what works with you and I is that we both are very clear on how we want our life to roll out and we're on the same page. Yeah. And a lot of people are reading different books. And I think that's really hard in marriage, but it's even harder in business. Well, I can't, like I always, am, you know, it's funny. I was talking to somebody today and I said, Lauren and I have like told, they're asking like what stories I want to tell. This is completely unrelated, not to go on a tangent, but I said, you know, like they've heard that we've known each other since 12 and we've been together and we've done the, and it's fine. Like I'm, we could keep saying it and rehashing it, but like, it's kind of like been told. But what I always caveat to people, especially our personal friends, when they're getting into new relationships, Lauren and I got, we've known each other since we're 12. And then we got back together when we were 20. That's after eight years, almost yeah. a decade of knowing each other. And now we've been together for 16, 17 years. And so it's just like, there's so much time of getting to know someone. And in that time, there's a lot of time spent on like, what do you want? What do yeah. I want? What is like your overall vision? And we always, I always joke like, there's the couple that wants to go build the pie shop. One person's vision is like, I want to build a mom and pop store and like take the kids to the beach, you know, on a half day and like relax. And on the weekends, go on a picnic. And the other person's like, I want to build a thousand pie shops all over the world and never stop and go, go, go. Like you want to do the same thing, but right. the scale is different. And if one person is here and the other person's up here, like it's just, you're mismatched. Yeah. I mean, I think like that was, and you have to be like consistent, you know, if what, when you're communicating, this is what I want. I think the consistency and if it's going to change, then you have to be able to vocalize that and be able to communicate that. Yeah, it's as just well difficult though, the ride. when people ask relationship advice and it's like, hey, I've been with someone for a year and a half or two years and now we're doing this and we're going to. It's not that there's anything like that's how people meet, but I'm just careful because everybody's circumstances are different. Yeah. I think my first advice to people as a couple is don't work together. Yeah, like I, would say the like, same I would say like, yeah. do not work together. Do not start a business yeah. together. Do not it's join hard. a company. Like, yeah. Marriage is fucking hard. Unless, and then you want to add that on top of it. Like, unless you like absolutely cannot not do it together. Yeah. Like that's where we got to. And and yeah, to your point, like raising kids, being married is way easier for us than figuring out how to manage the businesses. Like I just want everyone to understand that. Like all the difficulties. And we that don't come, even work together every day. Yeah. yeah. But the difficulties well, that come lot. with raising children. Super impossible difficulties mm -hmm. that come being in a marriage super hard like the business stuff has been way harder so for couples like oh, i'm thinking i'm gonna do this like just understand it's it's way harder than all the other stuff 100 percent. how do you how did you manage all the the business stuff with what you were going through with with lyme's disease and divorce like how do you how do you i guess i'm wondering like what you use in like your resilience toolbox like what are the things that really helped you was it cold plunging was it dirt like what are the things that you went to i think once I was actually honest with my team, that was like the biggest, I think for so long, like I didn't want to tell anybody what I was going through. You know, I was like, I'm fine. Again, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And finally, I was just like, you know what? This is what I'm going through. And like, I need some grace. Like I will try to be on every call. I might not make it. And it was like, once I actually was honest, that almost was just like the I can breathe like the weight off my shoulder. And like, I really kind of relied on my team, like my business partner, Julie, talk to her every day and every night because I, I couldn't be on the calls every day. I mean, I, I'd literally fall asleep at like 11 in the morning on the floor. I was so tired. I couldn't function. And then once I got stronger and I started to get better, I would come back. But, you know, that's really when it was again during COVID, like I went out, I stayed in the Hamptons and I just really focused on me and myself and my healing. And like what changes on my schedule did I have to make? I used to be able to sit at that fucking computer from, you know, after my workout from nine till I didn't give a shit what time I'll sit here all night on the phone. I don't have kids. I can do, let's keep going. No, you, we got to finish this. You're not going like, and then it was very like, if I have two hours, maybe at that time, then I want 30 minutes of break. And I couldn't like, for me, I couldn't just sit there at a computer screen all day anymore. Like what blocks I need to go to acupuncture. I have to go to my IV and really 
prioritizing me and my health before I could get 100% kind of back in and really relying on my team to pick up, you know, some of what I was doing. It's so interesting with building a business because what I've what I've observed from very successful people is that what gets you to from A to B doesn't necessarily get you from B to C. And mm-hmm. what I mean by that is I was the same way when I first started out. It was like seven days a week. I didn't give a shit how late I got home. I yeah. was posting that blog post. I was returning 600 emails. I was up till two in the morning. He's like, get the fuck off the computer. <laughs> it was like, I was like, I was like a maniac. You're like, get out of my fucking no, way. It, yeah, yeah, get out of my way. Like I'm doing this. But then that stops serving you. Mm -hmm. And you have to pivot within the evolution. And that's a really big uh, mindfuck. Like I I started to realize the same, like, okay, I can take this call and take a walk at the same time. Or I can take two hours and go to the foot spa and sit and return emails for two hours. I don't need to be on every single call micromanaging. It's just interesting how what gets you gets you there doesn't take you to the next level. I get nervous though with this topic too, because I think Okay, since we've all last met, all of us are in different stages. You've been running your business now. How long have you been doing this? Six and a half years. Okay. Like, and we've been, Lauren's been doing this for a long time, but the podcast, eight years, and Dear Media, six years, like all these things. And the things that it took to kind of get to this place, like I remember it was like we were working other jobs. We were burning it down. We were driving in the middle of the night sometimes. We were getting no sleep. We were, it was just like grind, 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 no work-life balance, you know, sitting yeah. at a computer, like all these things. And I want to make it very clear to people like that was absolutely necessary to get to these places. And sometimes now when I talk like the like a lot of what the life looks like now is like we have to spend a lot of time making smart decisions and, and thinking thoughtful mm-hmm. because now there's a like, space. Yeah. yeah. And, and Clarity. There's, there's entity. But I, I get nervous because I think sometimes people want to be like, oh, I want to jump to that part. It's like, no, they're like if you want to live an extraordinary life and have an extraordinary business that you control on your time that you are the direct benefit of, it is going to require an immense sacrifice and a ton of work. There's there's no such thing as like clocking in. Clocking no, out. I mean, I always say like I started a wellness company and I was never so unwell. Mm-hmm. Huh? Never. What do you mean? Explain that. But just you you put yourself last like you are you're doing every job you're working all hours. There is, I don't give a shit about my sleep. Oh, I have I eaten today. I don't know. I'm not worrying about that. You're just, there's this like excitement and that, you know, that like hunger at the beginning that like we're saying, you just, you will do whatever it takes to. to get it off the ground and like, holy shit, it's hot. Okay. How do we keep it going? We got to make it hotter. Keep pouring gasoline on it. Okay. Say yes to this. Say yes to that. We got to fly here. We got to fly. Like, you're just figuring it out as you go. And you have to do that at the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, but then as, as the business matures, as you hire more people, as you mature, I think then the next stage is like, well, what do I need to be happy to successfully run this business? Yeah. Well, like it's like, it's like you, you also, my vision of my life is the tortoise and the hare. Like you can get there quick. Yeah. Like we've all seen people blow up overnight, but the tortoise is, it takes a little longer and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being incredibly patient to build something that is a house of bricks as opposed to a house of straw. I think you have to choose what you want to build. Yeah. yeah but whenever people are like, okay, what is work-life balance? And then you say like, you're not going to have any balance in the beginning. It's going to be all work. You're going to have no time for friends. Your life's going to be in shambles. Your health is probably going to be diminished. Like a lot of people can't stomach that. They're like, yeah. they, they, we've got stuck on this thing where it's like, well, I want work-life balance. Like that's fine. But in certain instances, again, if you want to build, like how many companies fail that, you know, you never hear of? There's way so more than many. the ones that succeed. And I, what I always try to tell people is like, the ones that make it are most, it could be luck, could be right time for place, but it's most likely somebody that is completely out of balance in the beginning and just dedicated. But I think even how time. many companies you hear about and you're like, oh my God, they've been around for 15 years. I thought they just launched a year ago. I know that happens all Wait, the time. they've been around for 12 years? Yeah. Really? Yeah. There's I no, there's there's no overnight like, success. You don't, because it's like, right. It takes that long and then something happens and they're hot. And I think for so many people, it's like, I'm just going to be hot overnight without kind of understanding that whole grind it takes to get it going. What are your hot moments? What are things that have happened that are like huge? I mean, 
to to a lot of people, it will look like you guys just blew up. But like you said, it's been six and a half years. So what are some moments that you have long this journey that have been like pinch me moments? Well, and even the Jennifer Aniston stuff, it sounds like it was years before that even like that that phone call happened. Yeah, I mean that we were around five years. I mean, yeah. then that happened. God, so many. I mean, I think launching or opening our New York and Chicago studio. And then even like what I get really excited about is we started franchising in 2019. And so like cool. we own New York, Chicago, LA, that's it. All the rest of the locations are all franchised on. But like to see people who've been streamers for four years or five years or just women who like quit their jobs and they want to open a P-Volve studio like and bring it to their community. I just had dinner with one in LA the other night. And I'm just like, like that's so cool. You want to like you that's own cool. a P-Volve studio. Like it's Crazy. Wait, it's how, so crazy. How can someone become a franchisee if they're listening and they want to quit their job and just say, I'm going to fucking do this? Pevolve.com, go to the franchise page, schedule a call, learn more. I mean, we've sold about 47 wow. to date. Yeah. You done any in Austin? We do. We, we have do. three oh. coming to Austin. Oh, right. We do. I heard that mm -hmm. I heard the rumor. Yeah. It's, I will be going to one. And it's just to me, that's it's so incredible because like the community, yes digital, you can work out online, but like the community aspect of being in person and getting to interact with your members on a day-to-day -day basis, because, you know, from this workout, yes, you're going to hear all about my body's changed this, but it's all the like, and benefits of how this truly transforms people's lives. And that community feel like you can't fully replicate that online. What do you do with your personal wellness and fitness? Like how many days a week are you doing this? Are you mixing in other workouts? No, you're just doing this. I how many days a week? <laughs> Honestly. Honestly, I have only done this workout for probably almost eight years. I do nothing else. That's it. That's it. And how many days a week? Like, I wish I actually was wearing workout pants because, like, my butt, that's, like, my thing. Oh, that's, that's you want to show your butt on the... I mean, not... Like, <laughs> Carson, Carson, they're, they're kind of baggy. There. They're kind of baggy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I work out six to seven days a week, um, but not every day is, like, an intense hour. For so give us, like, the whole schedule. You need the schedule. Okay, depending on my work schedule, depending on my mood, I'd say probably four four of those days. Now I'm living in LA currently. So I go to the studio. So I'd say four of those days are like an hour class. And that's a mix of strength and sculpts so with sculpting classes and weight training classes. If you told me that I'd be lifting heavy weights in my early twenties, I probably would have said, you're fucking crazy. I will never do that. Now I'm obsessed with it. I thought that I would, you know, get bulky and see the gym bros are right. I'm telling you, gym bros are right. <laughs> and now don't think that at all. Like I actually feel so strong and powerful and lean from doing that. So I incorporate that probably two days a week. The other days I work out at home, maybe 20, 30 minutes, a mix of other sculpting classes or just stretching. But I do this now because how open and energized I feel. Like my back is open, my hips are open, my body just, it fucking feels good. Like, yes, I'm doing it because I want to keep up how I physically look. But more importantly, it truly is because of how I feel. And when I don't do it, it just feels like I'm not starting my day off the right foot, you know, on the right sure. foot. Like I just my posture is amazing. My I just it's all those things of why I do it probably every day. And this is universal, man, woman, whatever. In the beginning, a lot of the workouts and things people do are like for vain reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. You want to look good. But then I think as you start to age, like for me, I just want to be able to pick up all these kids' strollers and all the yeah. shit without breaking my back. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I've always traditionally done weightlifting, but now I'm like drawn to different things like Pilates, which is strange, like a strain for me to you say You would that. love this. No, that's what I was going to say. As you're talking, I was like, oh, I'm going to try this too, because yeah. I think a lot of the men that are listening are having the reverse problem. Which is like you, you can't go any, like, I think if you go too far down the weight stuff too, you also can get yeah. out of balance. And now I'm like, okay, how do I get structurally sound and work on smaller muscles and do things? that you wouldn't typically think that would be good for me. You know what I mean? For sure. I mean, it's it's so important to have just like a functioning, healthy body, you know, to have, to be able to like externally rotate, internally rotate. I mean, you're picking up your kids. You have to what bend. A novel you have, thought, to, being able to, you have to reach. You have to, you know, your body goes through all these planes of motion yep. the whole day. Mm -hmm. And so why aren't you training that way in your class? And then by adding the resistance equipment or the weights. It's like, it's that just extra added layer. 
you know, with all of, that's really the secret sauce. Let's do here. one of these together, Lauren. We will. Yeah. I have to see you squeeze the ball between your balls. Yeah, I could do it. I could do it. <laughs> all it takes is one ball, Michael. Okay. Just takes one. one ball. I'm in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how heavy is the weight that you're lifting in class? Is it like really heavy? Is it light? Like what is it? We range, I mean, ranges from maybe like five to 15s. Again, it's up to you what you want for you your pick. body. Yeah. I probably go like fives and eights. If it's lower body, I might go a little heavier. If it's upper body, maybe not so much, but it's about progressing. So maybe you work with fives for a couple of months and then you're like, you know what? Actually, I'm not hitting that muscle failure. Let me go up to eights and like, oh, okay, now I'm really feeling it. And we'll, depending on the move or if we're standing or on the mat, the trainer will say, okay, grab a heavier set or grab a lighter set. Um, really depends on what they want to focus on. But I'm like obsessed with it. Actually, since we rolled it out, it's a newer class we launched like almost two years ago. Scorching. All the girls, doesn't matter the age, they are obsessed with it. That's the one that I need to do next time I'm in LA. Like imagine you have that ball on and you're stepping out and then you have the weights and then you're squeezing with Hard. the heavy weights. It's So you, you still have like the P-Vol feeling. You know, you have the ankle band, you have the glider and you have like some of those very controlled, um, small, like sculpting sections of the class, but then you have the weights and then you're really focusing on that. Everyone needs to know what your favorite workout is on the streaming app and also what Jennifer Aniston's is. So we have a row that's called Jen's Picks and they're all oh, her favorites. Jen's Picks. Jen's Picks. Um, we have something also really exciting launching. I don't know if I can say this, but fuck it. I'm going to say it. Um, launching with her at the beginning of May. Um, so new stuff to come there that you'll find out more of her faves. But yes, Jen's picks, all her recommendations, a lot of weight training classes in there too. She's a big fan. My favorite workout in the library. Shit, that's really hard. Hey, give us maybe three. Definitely one with the P-ball and Danny Coleman. It's like a 30 minute um, lower body burn. There's a 15 minute P band with Maeve that just like. Just do it quick. Destroy. Yeah. And like sometimes I'll stack them. Mm -hmm. Like I'll do 30 minute lower body because I think that makes it go by faster too. Yeah. Than just doing a full 50 minute video. But then we also have live classes through Zoom. So if like the trainer can see me, I can see the trainer and they're like, Rachel, push your knee back. Oh my God. So like if you're streaming at home, my phone rings. I can like, you know, the doorbell rings and I go away. But when it's live and I have the camera on, I'm like, fuck, she can see me. Like also, I gotta be you know, here. Sometimes I'll do like a workout and I'll put on a podcast and just lower the volume. Yeah. So I can like at least like get some education in <laughs> while I'm working out to like habit stack it. Yeah. That's what I like sometimes about streaming. It's nice. You can like do two things at once kind of. Yeah, for sure. And then your kids come in and sit on, sit on you and you can't do anything, <laughs> but you try, you know what I mean? Listen, as long as you showed up, that's it. And for me, it's less about the time it's just being consistent. Like I always tell people if they're starting, like, you know what? Start two days. Maybe it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And like with this, your body's gonna crave it. What and are some it feels wellness so and beauty things that you're doing? Some some secrets that you're doing. Your skin's super glowy. Really? Yeah. Um well, I just heard you talk about something that I want to go try. The sam what is it? The, oh god. The semen, the salmon semen. Salmon semen. Yeah, I want to try. Are, how I long are you here for? <laughs> I'm leaving tonight, but do they have in LA? My salmon semen girl books up like literally two months in advance. Oh, fuck. But the she salmon is. semen oh, girl on, books up. Okay, my, I gotta my, get but you in can on get that. salmon semen. Is it actually salmon it's semen, or is it derived from something? Amazon or not Amazon. It's truly salmon semen. Yeah. It's exosomes. I do those injections. Okay. So ask that's them next why time when that I've done them and they've really made a big difference for me. So when I heard you talking about it, I was like, I think I should try it for the face. I bet you could find it in LA. For sure. People thought I was nuts. And then Brian Johnson came on and he's like, oh yeah, salmon semen. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah, Brian. And then people thought you were really nuts. No, because when he is his stamp of approval, he knows his shit. Yeah, yeah. he does What know else? Shit. Beauty, makeup, wellness, weird things you're weird doing. Th I mean, like I love the sauna. Okay. I maybe don't love the cold as much. Um cold shower. But I mean, really, I cook most of my own food. I, you told me that last yeah, time. Go super off on clean. That. I just super clean. Like, no, I don't do dairy. I don't do gluten. I really don't eat grains. And for me, it's just like, that's what my body feels good on. Meat? 
Yep. I do a lot. I've been doing a lot more meat recently. Okay. So and you red cook, meat. All, you cook at home. Yep. Cook everything myself. Like I like going out to dinner for the experience of, with friends, whatever. Like I truly don't like going out to dinner. I'm much more like five o'clock eat in my pajamas, crazy bun on my hat. I don't wear makeup usually. And like housewives go to sleep, wake up. See, I keep trying to tell. Day. Lauren told me we we're going to a dinner this week. I'm like, oh, no. I'm more know. actually of a leisurely lunch type. I like a long leisurely lunch She's on like, like a Saturday. I like that. Go See, meet. I like that. I don't like a Sunday because if I'm going to drink alcohol, I don't want it to go into my Monday. I like, I a, like Saturday, a lunch better than yeah. a leisurely lunch. Yeah. I like a lunch better than a dinner because then I get messes with my sleep. I, will, you know? I love a 5 p.m. dinner. It's the best. Yeah, yeah it's we'll bring people in from out of town. I'm like, we have dinner. And like, what time? Like 5 p.m. Because you still can go to sleep by night. And you're not hung over the next no. day. Yeah, I like a, a 5 p.m. dinner. And also I want to eat early because I like. I think that's a skinny tip. I can't like eat and then go to sleep. On My dad's like, I have to go to bed on a full stomach. I'm like, that's the most sickening no, thing No, Michael ever like tries to like hook up with me after Ugh, I eat a steak. No, I'm like, no, can no, I? No. Come on. Digest. Like, no. Come on. I'm not going to say no to my husband. I'm not going to say no to him. But like, it's like, give, like let me like digest. It's my way of training because we've had so many people say, hey, stop eating three hours before bed. So I'm like, if we eat at five, go to bed at eight, you're good. <laughs> if you eat it like. I do like my piece of small cinnamon raisin toast in the bed disaster. that I crunch next to him every night at Love night. That. I come home and her and my daughter will like, I don't know what you guys I, are doing. She does it they too. Like cracker, there's just crumbs <laughs> no, 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 no. everywhere. It's Dave's killer bread raisin. It's a small piece. It's not a big piece of bread, which is nice. And then you do grass fed butter on it. Oh, yeah. With a little bit of yeah, but why do you have to do it? soul salt. But why do you have to do it like right before Because there's bed? something. Let me yeah. just, I have to go off on this. When you're sitting in bed at the end of the day, and for me, like I try to do my all, like my hardest work I can possibly do every day. When I sit down with my Kindle, and I have my small piece of toast that I want and that I craved all day. And I can just sit and read my Kindle. There's something that's like, ah. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. But it's, all, it's like a light snack. You know, it's not a huge meal. I get it. You want like a little crunch before bed or something sweet. Okay, so we have a giveaway. I'll let you say what the giveaway is, but it's a good one. So let's, I know we said one, but I feel like we should give away two. Very nice. Two total transformation bundles that come with all 13 pieces of equipment. They also come with the year of streaming. Let's do that. Also it comes with a complimentary consultation with the trainer. They can help set you up with a very personalized plan. And then we have a code. We have a code, code skinny. And yep. what's the percent? 20%. That's very generous. Yes. 20% off to win the giveaway. All you guys have to do is follow at Pvolve on Instagram mm -hmm. and tell us your favorite takeaway of this episode with Rachel on my latest post at Lauren Bostick. I think it would be fun too for me to pick my favorite exercise and tell you guys what it is. Maybe I, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, I will definitely pick my favorite and maybe I can take a picture of you. I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. Michael's going to have the ball on. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Here's the thing because... Brianie came on the other day and was like, okay, let's see if you do Pilates. And so now I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the Pilates. He did do Pilates. Yeah, I've been doing it. I've done like four yeah, weeks. Yeah, he will, he will do this. See, because I, you're going to love I it. Like the I promise you're going to love it. I need the, okay, I want to tell the audience this. The, you guys rebranded your ball and uh, did you rebrand everything? Oh, yeah. Okay, everything. And it is not that it wasn't chic before, it's but so it's chic so now. chic. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like a it's kind of like arms. a, legs, like an ivory. Yeah, like a bone. Bone, a bone excuse mm -hmm. me, a bone white. And then it's just chic and it's pretty and it's something that I wouldn't mind being out in my house because it doesn't cause me chaos. Yeah, exactly. Bone white reminds me of American Psycho. You know, when he's doing the business card, he's like, bone white. <laughs> we just needed to evolve it a little bit, I elevate it. it a little Rachel, bit. Rachel, where can everyone find you? Where can they work out with in person? Like, give us all the details. You can find me on Instagram at rkatzman, but I'm very boring. I don't really post anything. Um, Follow Pvol. That's probably more exciting. Okay. Um, and you can go to pvolve.com and you can either check out where all of our locations are. If there's a studio in your city, when one's coming to your city, and then you can sign up for streaming and get started right there. And if someone wants to do a franchise, maybe you could do it in San Diego because we're all. We there. have two in San Diego. Where in San Diego? Carlsbad and UTC Mall. Hey, and we nice. have two more opening in San Diego. Where? I will find out for you right after this. San Diego is hot. San Diego is hot. UTC Del Mar is the old be, stomping ground. Yeah. Del Mar would be crushed. Wait, no, I think that's where the next one's coming. Del Mar. In August, I'm pretty maybe sure. Maybe downtown or La Jolla. I have the address. I will give it to you right after okay. this. You guys, if you want a franchise, go check them out too. At Pvolve on Instagram. Rachel, thank you for coming on. Go listen to her other episode that she was on. 
six years five years five, five years, years ago. ago january of 2019 I looked we'll do it up. we'll do it another five years and also yeah. <laughs> i want you to come on the blog so you can share your workouts so people can easily access them i will post that on the skinny confidential.com rachel thank you for coming on thank the you the old episode was number 162 that's a long time ago damn yeah because it's like almost 700 now well we'll see you in two years <laughs>